All right, guys, just a quick reminder, the Pete Corielli Authentic Comedy Tour is underway. I, w- I want to thank everybody so far from Boston. I had a blast. Ridgefield, uh, Connecticut, you guys were fantastic. So, I, I listen, thank you all for coming out. More shows coming. You go to PeteCorielli.com, and you can see all the dates. I got Philly coming up, Milwaukee, Chicago, Charlotte, Long Island, Washington, D.C. More dates to come. This is is the Pete and Sebastian Show with Pete Corielli and Sebastian Maniscalco. Yeah, we're going, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. we're on. What do you think think this is? Uh, I thought they were trying to get the headphones going. All right. What's up, Pete and Sebastian Show? We're back, baby. So what's We're up? Black, old school How style. Old school style. Uh, I'm. I'm. Uh, there's a lot. I mean, guy. I don't know when's the last time we did this. There's so much that's happened between yeah, yeah. once I last saw you and now. I bet. Which, when when yeah. did I at least see you? Ve- Vegas. Uh, yeah, yeah. Vegas. Yeah, they, like this show might have to come out immediately. Like it might have to just trump all the other ones, right? Because like it's going to be so. It's a lot going on, man. Yeah, well, 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 I just got out of the shower, just got out of the steam room, Matt. My head's all over the map. You've settled in. You've done your hobby. Yeah, yeah, same thing. I feel like I feel I feel like you're a little bit more collected than I am. So give me a piece of Pete's life. I don't know. Give me a give me what's going on because we've been so out of touch. I feel like I I literally don't even know you. Right. Well, we listen. We can go big. We can go small. Let's go small because big is I'm ready to discuss the photo I sent you about what then went down in my town, and that's going to take some time. So we'll get into that later. Maybe maybe next show. But I got to hit you with something small. We had on musician great dude Andy Frasco. Right, getting a lot of positive feedback about Frasco. Everybody loved that hang when he put his foot out. We talked about the shrooms, and, and you go, hey, 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 we're good, guy. Hey, 10 o'clock in the morning. I got, I got a family, right? So very funny. So anyway, uh, he's playing November 30th in Buffalo. I'm going to go see him. But we've been texting. We've been coming, uh, been becoming, like, friendly, right? Good dude. So the other day, he hits me with a nice text about being friends for a long time. And then I hit him with just a great line of mine where I said something like, I, I listen, I'm paraphrasing him. I said something like, I don't, I don't plan on having a run into my late 80s or anything, but I figure yeah, I'll know you for as long as I'm alive. I don't know, but I don't know how long that'll be, something like that, right? So this is his move, and I think I'm going to steal this, <clears throat> and I want you to take on it. He hits back with just a song from Spotify, right? So I, I click on it, and it's a song by uh, old country legend George Strait. And it's called "Here for a Good Time." And like I won't do the whole thing, but the chorus is, "I'm not, uh, I'm not here for a long time. I'm just here for a good time. So bring out the sunshine, forget the red wine, pour me some moonshine." Oh, dude! And it like summed me up. The song summed me up. You know, I don't know how long I'm gonna be here, but while I'm here, let's have a good time. Frasco hit me with a song that summed me up, and that was his response. I'm thinking, dude. Like, what if you, what about you? What if you did that? You're on a text with somebody. I'll give you an example, but you're only, you only use the Michael Jackson catalog, maybe the Prince catalog as well, stuff you're familiar with, right? I go, my wife left me. I thought we had such a good thing, bro. I'm in my late 50s. I don't know. I guess I'll figure it out somehow, but thanks for being such a friend throughout it all. What Michael Jackson tune are you sending back to me on Spotify that just sums all that up? You know what I'm saying? I can't make you decide so fast, but that would be the kind of kind know, of thing. Maybe uh, gone too soon. Wow! See, if we had DJ Lou, I'd know exactly what that sounds like. Am I allowed to <laughs> you know, do a Google on that or something? But like, like. I like that though. Maybe representing the marriage has gone too soon. It didn't last as long soon. as it should. Wow. Yeah, but I gotta. T- I got listen, guy. I gotta go and rewind the the tape here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, take me to what you told him about. It. I'm. 
I'm going to be living into my 80s, but we're going to be friends. What the fuck is that, bro? What, 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 uh, this is like some high school shit. We're going to. Nah, nah. <laughs> what? Bro. <laughs> But what is that? I, I I hate to I hate to snap back when I'm snapped upon right now. But you know I bite my tongue about this daddy doctor shit for like two years now. I text one guy uh, uh, like you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm just yeah. saying you, you you don't think that's a little not he, Pete? To, yeah. to, 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 guy, first of all, I mean, come on. I'm looking up the text, but first of all, you gotta understand, guy. This guy. Is is like a, a one one song away, or just some of his songs being recognized away from being a rock star? Okay, and like that's a different level of friendship having a rock star friend guy. That's like you know what I'm saying. So it's an investment. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though, no. I like Frasco. I'm joking with that. He's got some I great know, fucking but- tunes, but he hit me with. I was I hit him out of nowhere. I've been playing his music. I'm on like five songs that I love. So I hit him with a text out of nowhere going, hey, man, uh, great hanging with you. Just got to let you know, man, I've, some of your tunes, I've been playing them. And I go, this one, that one, that one, really dig it. I go, I've been coming out on stage to this one. So just keep it up, bro. Uh, and then he says something back like, oh, bro, uh, bro, I'm, I'm sorry, bro. Uh, 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 I'm, <laughs> what the? Guy, it's you're coming out to his music? Some- what are you coming out you're to coming, his music? You're coming out oh, to yeah, his yeah, music? Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what is yeah. that, a towel? What the it's fuck a are you fucking wearing? paper towel. You, <laughs> bro, you're throwing me off. It's artistic, uh, you know, encouragement back and forth. Yeah, I'm coming out to a tune. Oh, I oh, miss bro. getting high just to get high. Now I have to get stoned just to get by. I used to just laugh, used to just live, never ask why. I miss getting high just to get high. Whoa. All right, listen. Right out of the steam room into some Andy Fresco (laughs) a cappella. (laughs) I'm going to hit you with this. This is the equivalent of us doing a cast with Garcia, right? Uh And then the next time you see me. I'm walking around in a red rope. This, oh, this, is, this is the equivalent. Bro, that's your goal. You know it is, but go ahead. <laughs> with, with him, just getting off the links, coming out of the steam with Garcia, having just discussed stock. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've just, just busted your chops. I'm glad that you got I a know, new friend. I'm glad you no, got I, a new friend. I love that you busted my... Well, you know what? <laughs> Maybe if you'd return a text a little more often, I wouldn't have to go look for one. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously though. No. Uh I'm really like I honestly though, no, all joking aside, bu- busting the balls is very funny. But I am liking his song, so I hit him with that. And then he hits me with like a funny thing back up uh saying, Thanks a lot, bro. I have a feeling we're gonna know each other, be friendly for a long time. Right? I thought it was cool. And then that's when I hit him with my dude, I don't know if I'm gonna make it to my I come big with my big eighties, not make it to my eighties speech. And then he hit me with the song. But now talking to you, you're making me feel like he was like, dude, just play the song. Turn it down. <laughs> oh, my God. How many times are you going to text me back? We're done, guy. <laughs> so, so did you text back Off on the song? The song? Yeah. No. I took it as, oh, a, I took it as a split. Yeah, yeah. You hit me with a song. You're like, all right, we're done. All right? Go play that. <laughs> Oh wow! Uh, yeah, I but, missed this dissecting. I missed this, you know. <laughs> Listen though, yeah. could you misinterpreted that the song was not meant for you, but it summed him up? Well, man, that would be pretty narcissistic, right? You're sending out a song that sums you up to the person you're chatting with, like yeah, because know. because he don't want to chat with you with the text. He goes, bro, if you want to get to know me, this is the song. This is this is what I'm about. I yeah. So, so then maybe I should hit him back with a with a bit, a stand up bit that sums up me. <laughs> Jeez. But you know, you bring up a good point because then I said, see you November thirtieth, uh, the town hall or whatever in uh, Buffalo. Looking forward to PDC there. But he, he he don't even know how I, how I'm getting tickets, right? You don't hit me with a you you set up. Like with ticks or anything, you know? Wow, this Whoa. guy blowing me off. 
But then he followed me on Twitter last night. He's throwing mixed signals, guy. Mixed signals left and right. Bro, that's why we got to do the cast more often because yeah. I'll walk you through this whole thing. Yeah. I feel like you're more in love with him than he's than he's in love with you. Nobody's throwing out the L word, bro. I know you're trying to make good <laughs> good radio, okay? But, you know, just uh, trying to support an artist, all right? <laughs> Besides, even if we started hanging out, at some point he's going to want to do mushrooms because he does them apparently all the time. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, then I'm going to go, all right, I'll be your when you're not on shroom, friend. <laughs> <laughs> Being in the grocery stores during the holidays is like being stuck in a maze. And don't get me started on the wine aisle. Between the people crowding the aisle, the giant selection, and my limited knowledge of wine, I've always ended up grabbing the same bottle and running for the checkout. But with First Leaf, they take the stress out of finding new wine. First Leaf is the wine club that sends me personalized shipment of bottles that are based on my unique palate right to my door. All I have to do is go to First Leaf's website, answer a few questions about my likes and dislikes, and their expert team will select a customized assortment of world-class wines based on my preferences. Now, I love First Leaf because they also make it super easy to get personalized wine boxes delivered on my schedule right to my door. Since I choose the day my shipment comes, I'm never stressing about missing a delivery. Plus, All First Leaf wine is priced 30% lower than what you'd pay at wine stores. And every selection is backed by First Leaf's 100% satisfaction guaranteed. Now, I'm a big wine guy. Love drinking a nice Pinot Noir or Cabernet with some of the steak I make. And this program has made it completely easy to get the wines I enjoy at a fraction of the price. Find the wine you love this holiday season with First Leaf. Go to tryfirstleaf.com slash the cast to sign up and you'll get your first six hand curated bottles for just $44.95 people. That's T-R-Y-F-I-R-S-T-L-E-A-F dot com slash the cast. Tryfirstleaf.com slash the cast. <laughs> All right. So that's it. By great Andy Frasco. Go check out his music though, folks. It really is good. Now, now. We're hanging now. So what's up, bro? Where are, we, where are we going? What do you got on your end? It's been a lot going on. Let's get into something a little uh, lengthier. Yeah, so since I've last talked to you, my uncle passed away, right? I think I texted you this. Yes, or you maybe did, I did. I don't know. Very sorry to hear that. Yes, man, you did. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> so I go home to was the way funeral. Was this your father's brother? Father's brother. So my sister and I go back back to the house now my sister and i haven't really traveled together solo i don't think really ever so it was it was nice to just hang me and her on the plane goofing around um so we get to the house it was like it was like old times you know we're in our old childhood house sleeping in our old rooms sharing the same bathroom same shit going on knocking on the door you ready Mm -hmm. come on i gotta get in there you know the whole thing. Dude, it's the start of an independent film. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and if I can interject here for a second, because it's funny when my family passed away, my, um, you know, same sort of a thing, you know, like uh, you, you go and you do it with your sister, like with my dad. But um, <clears throat> for your listeners out there, notice how a relative on Sebastian and his sister's side passes away. So Sebastian and his sister go and deal. If you're married... Don't uh, don't drag your spouse to Milwaukee because your aunt died. All right, don't even put your spouse in that position. Just go by yourself and tell them. Even if you don't have kids, even if they have no job and nothing else to do, that's your deal. That's your right. That's how I feel. Well, yeah, that's a that's a great point, and uh, it's funny. And this could be. A, uh, I don't know if I want to go there just yet. Yeah. But I, let me let me let me let me stay on where I'm going sure. with this. And I want to know if you think this is inappropriate. So we're at the funeral, and I had some moments myself, you know. I was, you know, you don't really know how you're going to feel. You know, you, you maybe have your private moments when someone dies, but then when you're out at the wake, 
you don't really know what type of emotions are going to kind of overcome you when you're there and you're seeing other people and whatnot. Yeah. So I had my moments, right? I was looking at, the moment I had was when I was looking at the carousel of photos of his life, right? And I started, you know, kind of looking at, and I started thinking to myself, oh, you know, I, I think maybe we do this in death. Hey, did I, did I spend enough time? Did, you know, you know, you start like feeling a little guilty about maybe what you didn't or did do. Anyway, here's my here's where I start to go off the track a little bit. What's your take on this? Because I'm sitting around, right? And it's a long day. It's three to nine the wake. People coming in, sorry for your loss, you know, you get the, that whole thing. It's terrible. What do you think? As I, I pitched this to my sister at the funeral. At the wake a bar in the back <clears throat> now i'm not looking a... for this <laughs> right 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 go ahead, go ahead. i'm not looking to party but no, you I know. know it's people are grieving right right eh, right maybe a little maybe a little tequila right now just to just to kind of like what you take I, listen, I, I was gonna. I don't think it's inappropriate. I, I do. I, I like the idea, but the minute you said tequila, you just you trashed it up a little bit. You trashed it up. I, I, I'm thinking. I'm thinking a nice bottle of scotch, a couple of bottles of red wine, something to soothe the throat while you say it. I mean, you turn it into like. What? I remember the time he told the manager to go fuck himself. <laughs> they gonna start going down memory lane. Turn it into a fucking Kelly's Irish pub. Right out there in the lobby, tequila. Jesus, guy, of all drinks, bro. I'm not. You're thinking tequila, what? Cuervo, eighteen hundred, spring break in Daytona Beach. I'm thinking a yeah. nice tequila, you know, uh, just on a, on a one rock, sipping it in the back, maybe on the couch. By the way, I think the mm -hmm. wake itself, mm -hmm. the 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 where the <clears throat> where they have wakes, they gotta update it. I think it's an antiquated uh, room. It, with the with the couches and the drapes and the shit, it just it's just sad. It just looks sad, so, hey bro. So, I, I, I I don't even know why we're doing the corpse thing. I mean, we've had this discussion before, but it just seems to me like, you know, I, we work so hard to look good. Now you're gonna see me at my worst right before the dirt comes. Jesus, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Makes no sense. How about just a fantastic? Everybody should pick their death photo, right? You pick it like you make your will. When I die, this is the photo that's going to be on the easel. When you walk in, there's going to be no coffin. You're going to look at that and say what you want to say. Just a reminder of what an Adonis I was in 1993. <laughs> All right? You know what I'm saying? Pick your best year, your best goddamn tan, boom, and show yourself at your peak. Well, you bring up a great point. God forbid yeah. you pass away. God forbid you pass away tomorrow. Yeah. Are you taking an older photo of you currently, or like a, like a current right. photo, or are you taking a right, photo right. of you when you're in your twenties? Because depending on how I die, if you get to my corpse within the first forty five minutes, I think we're good to go right here with what we got. I'm peeping. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I got no problem with that. But yeah. That's what I'm saying. You got to have control of your photo, bro. That's what I'm saying. You have to pick your photo. It's as important as writing your will. Because if you don't, Lana's going to pick it. And she's going to put you in when you're wearing some leopard t-shirt that she talked you into <laughs> that you didn't even want to be wearing. You know? And half your boys aren't even, aren't even going to be mourning you because they're going to be laughing at the photo at the easel, you know? <laughs> so, <clears throat> that's my take so, on that. So, you're going... You're go and then they had, you know, like the carousel of, of, of photos. And then I start thinking, you know, all right, you know, it's hard not to think, okay, how do you want to go? Like you're saying, you're saying easel photo, right? Right. Body on request. <clears throat> it's in the back room. <laughs> on request. If someone comes and they go, I want to see the body, you know, we, we bring you in the back. But, you know, so now everyone's just going, oh, look at, look at, everywhere he goes, Tony's always got to see the body. Always, what are you, a fucking detective? <laughs> But yeah, the body's in the back on request, but it's not out there for everybody. Okay, bo uh, B oh. body on B O R. As you well know, I am into cooking, and yeah, you could go to YouTube and type in any recipe and follow it. But if you're looking for a more elevated experience, 
go to master class. I've picked the brains of Wolfgang Puck and Gordon Ramsay and used several of their recipes to entertain not only my friends, but my family. Masterclass makes a meaningful gift this season for you and anyone on your list because both of you can learn from the best to become your best, from leadership to effective communication, and like I said, to cooking. How much would it cost to take a one-on-one class from the world's best? I don't know, hundreds of thousands of dollars? With a masterclass and annual membership, 10 measly bucks a month. There are over 180 classes to pick from with new classes added every month. Like uh, Steph Curry. How's this guy shooting three-pointers from the uh, from the midcourt? Check it out. This holiday season, give one annual membership and get one free. I mean, come on. You can't beat that at masterclass.com slash the cast. Right now, you can get two memberships for the price of one at masterclass.com slash the cast. Masterclass.com slash the cast. Offer terms apply. Uh, what do you think of this? Yeah. I was looking at the col- the carousel of photos, and it was really nice because you got to see him when he was with his kids. You got to see him you know, midlife. You got to see him when he's older. What do you think of a video, like a sizzle, like a highlight reel? I think that's phenomenal. I think that's Don't beautiful, you? man. Yes, right on a wall. You know what I'm set, saying? Just on a set loop. To some music. Yeah, I, I, I thought, oh, that'd be cool to see video footage of the person right. talking and whatnot. Right. For those of uh, those people there that maybe didn't really know who he was, you get to get a little glimpse of, of his life or the person's right. life. Bro. And then, yeah. What about this, to your point? You ever go to a museum, and then in the corner, they'll have a little area where there's some benches for like 15 to 20 people. To, if you want to watch the video now about how the bridge was made and it, it lasts like 10, 15 minutes and you sit and then you watch it, that's what's happening at the wake. There's a little viewing area in the corner. So this isn't just on a loop, right? You go to the wake, you see the, your corpse, then they slide over to the viewing area. They watch a 15 minute thing on you <laughs> and then they slide. And that's when they know it's time to leave now. But on the way out, we got tequila and wine and scotch at the bar. <laughs> oh my God, bro. Are we charging for your week? $20 a head? <laughs> this is turning into a cast. I could be right next to the corpse, dude. Right next to you doing a few. Yeah, no. So anyway, bro. Another, another thing that I noticed. Food. People are starving. I'm starving. And then, you know, you know, they have that set up in the back where you go in that little makeshift kitchen and they got like cookies or sandwiches or whatnot. Uh-huh. And everybody's in there. It's packed and whatnot. But I was thinking, oh, you know, what about like little past, little past hors d'oeuvres? Too much? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm digging it all, but now I'm thinking in terms of if I own the funeral home, you know, it's like, you know, and I have crumbs, people are eating all over the place. This is, you know, take this to your house, right? Was there an after party somewhere or, you know? No, there, there, there was a, a nice uh, lunch that we all went to yeah, after yeah. it was all said and done. But, but I want to get to what I did at the funeral. Okay. And I, I don't know if I've ever told you this story before. However... Lana's family has a tradition of releasing butterflies when somebody dies. Did I, are you laughing or did you sneeze? No. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick held in a sneeze. Let's, let's talk about that. Have you ever tried to hold in a sneeze? Uh, no, I never have. My, my sister used to do that. It drives me nuts. I don't. Yeah. It's dangerous, bro. It's dangerous. <laughs> I feel if you hold in a sneeze, yeah, it could stop your heart and you you could literally fall over, right? Absolutely, something could burst. Yes, you could have an annual what you call it, like um, a cyst or a clot, and you hold yeah, yeah. in a sneeze, pow! You just popped it. <laughs> there you go. Whereas before it was going to slide right through your body, right? You know, but now you do a hard jerk. It's no good. It's like, yeah, I'm right there with you, bro. I want to get back to these butterflies, though, man. This is like, oh, yeah, yeah. where do you, where do you, go back where do you to the get them and shit? All right. So what they do 
is right. they release the butterflies before they bury the person. And the concept of the butterfly is it's signifying that the dead is now free of constraints and it's able to fly, right? And when you see a butterfly, you think of the person who died. For example, they did this at Lana's father's funeral. They released butterflies. And every time we see a butterfly, we think of Lana's father because <clears throat> the thing is he's he's coming back to say hello in the form yeah, of a yeah. butterfly. So right. it's uh, Serafina's fourth birthday. We're outside and there's a butterfly flying around. And we're like, oh, look at L- Lana's father's right. here. You know, it might yeah. sound corny, yeah. but I thought it was a cool no, yeah. way to re- remember the dead, right? So I'm like, all right. No, it, is, it is. I'm just like, you know, if I wanted to go that route, I don't even know where I'd call to, to you know, I call a place that has butterflies and then say, I want to take 10 and let him go. And they're like, hey, it's fucking 35 degrees out. What the fuck? <laughs> so I get Lana on this. There's a place in Clearwater, Florida. They sell butterflies, right? For oh, this specific oh, you occasion. Get, for your uncle. You get it for your yeah. uncle? Get yeah. out of here. Okay. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. So I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. I'm going to do the butterflies. 100 butterflies. And they come in a little triangle envelope. You know, it looks like the, it looks like that. Remember when we used to play that game of football where you used to do the goalpost and you used to flick the little triangle yes. in school? Yes. So it looks like yes. that. That's what it looks like. It comes, and then there's like an inscription on it. Like you could say, hey, fly, release your wings and or whatever you, you want. You could put a little saying on the envelope, right? So they uh-huh. ship them overnight. By the way, guess how much? Just. Hold hold I on. Know. You're, say, you're yeah. saying there's a bu- a live butterfly in that envelope, yeah. Yeah. one per envelope. Yes. And where and where did you, where'd you order them from? Florida. Yeah. And you ordered a hundred. A hundred. You're a right? fucking rock star, bro. You are a star. That's like, that's some serious fucking movie star shit right there. <laughs> Holy shit, they're packing butterflies going, honey, get the beach house. Holy shit, he ordered a hundred monarchs. <laughs> I have no idea how much it would cost to get a hundred butterflies FedExed from Florida to Chicago in 24 hours. <laughs> Man, you ain't getting this shit on any other cast. <laughs> So it wasn't even a cost thing because Lana right. was taking care of it, whatnot, to so just get them there. But then right. afterwards, I ask, how much? How much right. is it to get? It's three hundred and fifty dollars. All right, that's it. Which I thought was cheap. I mean, for Holy the butterfly, sh- yeah, bro, you could get a pinata for your kid's birthday, <laughs> and right before it's time to release it, you put the butterflies in the pinata. One kid hits it, fucking hundred butterflies come out. That's worth three fifty. That's magic. <laughs> Holy shit! I thought I thought it was gonna be three fifty a butterfly, a butterfly. I wow, it was where fairly, is he? Fairly cheap. The, for for what the impact is, like to release a hundred butterflies at once. Right, right, I've, right. I've seen it done. It's beautiful. When, when my when my wife's family did it. I've been at one of these funerals. They let them go, and they're flying around. They give you a little kiss on the cheek, and they, oh. it's beautiful, right? It, uh, is there any color in these things, or are they all brown ones? You got to pay extra for ones with some color. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're not, like, the most, it, you know, like, it's, it's would, would, Could it be mistaken for a moth? Could it be no. mistaken for a okay. moth? No, no. All no, right, no, no. all right, because I'd be like... <laughs> Bro, I don't know why people aren't doing this. Uh, you, for your birthday parties with your kid and stuff, 350 butterflies, boom. I got it. That's unbelievable. This guy is yeah. like giving them away. He's giving them away. We did it at our wedding. We released butterflies. Kind of a, oh, a little shit. memory of her father, right? Right. So the butterflies come, and I, I've, never seen, I've never seen the actual shipment and how they come. Yeah. So yeah, I get yeah. this box. They come on ice. They're they're they have ice um, blocks in them. 
right. but in the box. Right. And the butterflies are in these like individual boxes, like three individual boxes, like 33 envelopes in each little box. The directions say, prior to releasing the butterflies, take the ice out and defrost for about an hour and a half. All right? Right, right. Wow. So I got these butterflies in the trunk. We go to the cemetery. There's a hundred people there. We all go into a chapel, and now people are going to speak. So I'm thinking, prior to going into the chapel, okay, we got a hundred people. And out of a hundred people, how many people do you think would speak as kind of like a final, hey, this man was great. How, right. how many speeches you think out of 100 people? I'd say about four, five max. Okay. I I said at, at least 10. 10. 10 people are going to get up there and say something, right? right. Mm -hmm. He's got four kids. He's got a wife. He's got a brother. He's got a best friend. I'm thinking, all right, you know, people are going to get up. So before I go into the chapel, I take out the ice. So one person gets up there. Beautiful speech. You know, speech, you know, it starts off, they're crying, right? Mm -hmm. And they say beautiful things about the person. And then there's a punch of humor in the middle of it. You now people kind of like, you're crying and you're like laughing. And then it goes Love to... It kind of a wonderful send-off right then my sister got up there right she she was gonna say something she's she she's trying to be funny right uh -huh. and my sister don't like talking in public right uh -huh. but she's trying to land some zingers right now at my wedding didn't you write some of the stuff I think I mean, I don't know if she you I I don't know if she used it, but I think I gave her some stuff, yeah. Okay, yeah. So she had she had a professional comedian writing the stuff for her at my wedding. At the funeral, she she said like a couple of jokes they didn't land and I almost told her I said just next time you try that, call me. <laughs> Listen, hey, the, the, I'm the, sure the, she, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure she had a lot of jokes at your wedding that she did herself, man. It should it sounds like she should have went before whoever went first. Whoever went first sounds like you know <laughs> they probably made some, they probably made some other people look at their wives and husbands. And go, forget, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Oh, yeah, yeah. He said enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so and I think we now I know what, what what's that? Yeah. The sister goes up. She does her thing, right? And then the guy who's running this thing comes up. He goes, right. uh, "Anybody else? Anybody else?" And I'm looking around. And I go, you gotta be shitting oh, me. Yeah. Nope. I got I got butterflies that need to be thawed. So, <laughs> bro, These things aren't ready to fly yet. I was gonna go up and do forty five just to give my butterflies some time to thaw. Bro, this is a goddamn this is a scene in a TV show, I swear to God. You're looking at someone else in your family, you gotta go up there and say something. And you go, I don't even like the guy. Say something. I got butterflies that are still coming out of hibernation. They need another 45 minutes. Oh my God. This is hilarious. I don't know why you didn't thaw these things before this whole thing went down. It's not like they're gonna die after 10 minutes. I thought I, I thought if you take out the ice and they right. are there for four or five hours in an envelope, that they're gonna die. So I was trying to time it, you know, like I didn't want to take right. it out too soon. Right. <laughs> From billion dollar ad budgets and arena naming rights to tens of thousands of retail location, big wireless providers spend big to appear like they are your only option. How do you afford it all? That big bill you get every month? Mint Mobile had a different idea. Instead of brick and mortar overhead, Mint Mobile is online only. What's that mean? A whole lot of savings because the wireless plans from Mint Mobile start at $15 a month. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for just 15 bucks a month. All plans come with an unlimited talk and text 
plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and keep your same phone number along with all your existing contacts. By going online only and eliminating the traditional cost of retail, Mint Mobile passes significant savings on to you. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free, go to mintmobile.com slash the cast. That's mintmobile.com slash the cast. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash the cast. So they're like, if that's if that's all the speeches, we'd like to now go to the mausoleum to to put him to rest. And I'm like, oh so we're going to the mausoleum. Now the mausoleum is outside. It's outside. Right. It's a, you know, right. and uh, it's raining, right? And like, yeah, yeah, just... So I take out the butterflies and I'm <laughs> passing them out. I'm passing them out. Now, you know, Lana's family, they're, they're accustomed to this. They've seen this before. My family, right? I, I got yeah. like, you know, people that don't even speak English, they're like, like, <laughs> just like old Italians, right? right they can't right, even grasp right, the right. concept that there's butterflies in the envelope. They're like, hey, <laughs> what do you mean? You know, like, I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> so I'm explaining. Release, my, this is a tradition my, my wife's side of the family does. They release butterflies, and it, it means that the, the butterfly is free. And next time you see a butterfly, you think of my uncle, right? I said, right. now on the count of three, I'd like to release the butterflies. So everybody rips open the envelope. Bro, frozen stiff. Right? <laughs> just, <laughs> just one one little wing is, is just trying to move on, on my butterfly. <laughs> so, so it's just, it's, it's hanging there on the envelope. I'm blown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to blow this thing off because I figure maybe if one starts to fly, the others will notice. <laughs> Holy shit, bro. Holy shit. Oh. So the butterfly oh. takes off, but he falls to the floor. <laughs> now all the butterflies are falling uh, onto the floor, right? And I'm, lo yeah. I'm looking around, bro. It looks like, it looks like a butterfly up apocalypse at the fucking funeral home <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, oh it couldn't God. have went worse couldn't oh have went God. worse oh my god oh. Bro. if you if you compare this to what lana's family does <laughs> right, it, right, it, right. It, it was it was awful they, bro, no one knew what was going on people are swearing in italian you know oh. the, that their butterfly is not flying like, like, like they got ripped off you know like they <laughs> bought the butterflies right? <laughs> right right and then and then it's raining so they're just getting wet and like on the Rain, ground wet. right I happened Shit. to step on one. I didn't even see it. I, oh I stepped on god. one. The kid saw me step on one, and he's like, "Oh my god, the butterfly! You stepping?" I'm like, "Oh fuck!" I said, "Let's wrap it up. Get in the car. Let's go to lunch." <laughs> <laughs> it's the last time I do this shit. <laughs> Holy shit, bro! Oh my god! Oh my god, dude! That is fucking you, unbelievable. Do you ever? Do you Holy ever feel? That like, like right out of like a, a modern family would have an episode like that. <laughs> Jesus, that's hilarious. Oh God. So you think the butterflies, by the way, are like, you know, they get frozen to like fall asleep, and they're like, wonder where we're going, <laughs> and they wake up and they're like, fucking Chicago, what the fuck? <laughs> Meanwhile, your wedding, they're opening up there in Napa Valley. They're like, oh my God, this is paradise. <laughs> Holy shit! Yeah, so that is I just told I was, I, was, I was telling Lana, oh my you know, God. you ever try and do something that's not, you know, like oh, I'm gonna try and do this because it sounds like a great idea, and then you just right. then you're like, you know what? Just let me stay in my lane. Just let's yeah. all go out and we'll eat meatballs yep. that what we normally do at these fucking funerals and 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 call it a night. I'm trying. I'm trying to. Start a family tradition <laughs> in fifty-three degree weather in a fucking rainstorm at, at a at, at a cemetery. <laughs> did you did you ever see four Christmases with Reese, Reese Witherspoon and, and Vince Vaughn? 
where they're yeah. going to go to each one. So Vince's character's got some cash. So he goes to his family's. And he's got a fucking satellite dish for Robert Duvall, his father. Duvall don't even want the fucking dish. And Vince Vaughn's on the roof trying to fucking screw it in. And the guy's like, what the, what is he doing up there? That's you with your hand out the butterflies. You know, you got, <laughs> come on, because you're coming from LA. You got, you're in the movies. And he's a butterflies. We're going <laughs> to. <laughs> oh, shit. God, that's a great oh, story. What if, uh, oh, man. So anyway, what that's the Pete and Sebastian show. That's it. We're done. That's a wrap on this show. <laughs> it's a sitcom episode right there. It's a sitcom episode. They're not even doing TV right now. Speaking of. <laughs> that's a good segue, yeah. bro. Yeah. I am. I'm not going to lie to you, man. I'm very excited to see the HBO show that you got coming out. It's still on sketch to come out. Some I don't know when this is coming out, but in uh, November, right? Um, I, I, Can I, I ask? can't, I can't talk about it. That's all right. I didn't realize that. I didn't even know you can't mention it as part, part of, uh, the ongoing yeah, yeah. WGA <laughs> negotiations. All right. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's coming out. I just don't know. Uh, I just, just, yeah, it's coming out. <laughs> all right. <laughs> all right. Uh, that is an unbelievable all, story, that, man. The butterfly thing though. Holy shit. That is great. Yeah, no, it was uh, it was an experience, but it was nice. It was a nice service. It was nice to go home. My sister and I had a great time, but my sister, you know, she's like, man, like when you don't hang out with your sister on a regular, like you, if, if you and your sister travel together for two days, you know, she would probably look at you going, wow, Pete, you you do X, Y, and Z, and you'd probably look at her and go, wow, you 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 know. Yeah, it, it, my sister was like, yeah. man, you, uh, like, I was, because I, I move. Yeah, like, like we, we travel, we move, you know, like, there, there's a pace. Yeah. Right, right. My right. sister, my sister not on that pace, right? We got right. on a plane, and, and she's like, my God, do I even have everything? We moved from the, the lounge to a car to the, to the plane, and next thing you know, we're on the plane. She's like, I don't even know if I got my computer back. Did we get my computer back? I go, yeah, we got it all. Don't worry about it. You know, she's like, <laughs> she, was, she was kind of, like, yeah. fascinated with the amount of, you know, just keep moving. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. The awareness of it all, the ease of it all. No, yeah, yeah, it is funny. <clears throat> and like, so you guys stayed at your parent, your dad. Well, your dad was there too, right, at the house. Dad right, was gosh, there. Man. Now, I, I have a question because you you said you your room is your room. It's not the same, right? No, as it was, right? No, it's different. I mean, all different furniture, the different paint. It's it's not the same room. I mean, and, and when I go back and I go in my room, I thought my room growing up, I thought my room was a castle. Right. Yeah, right. I thought it was huge. I was like, "Wow, yeah. look at this room! It's huge!" Right, right. right? Go in there now, bro. It's it's tight. It's tight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's great. It's what you know. Growing up, it's interesting. We're talking about this because about I don't know, maybe a month and a half ago, I was going to play. I was playing somewhere, and I was going to New York City for something. So the night before, I went to visit my sister. And I slept over. I had a few drinks, so I slept over. And her two kids are in college. So I slept in my nephew's bedroom, in his bed. He's in college now, right? And he's got, like, Carmelo Anthony's his favorite basketball player. So he's got the posters of Carmelo Anthony on the wall. He's got the signed baseballs on the desk, you know, all that kind of. <clears throat> and I was like, the bed was comfortable and all, but I'm like, Jesus, I'm, like, so much older than this freaking room, you know? And it's got me thinking about when I grew up and what I had on my wall. And uh, what did you, did you have posters on your wall? And what were they? Sports, movie, music? Did you what did you what did you what did you put on your childhood bedroom walls? Uh, I think there was a poster of I had that Farrah Fawcett poster. That oh, that's classy. Had. That's class. I mean, our parents had that. Not us. What are you like? Twelve years old with a Farrah Fawcett poster on. I think we did talk and about Samantha that, right? Fox. I had the Samantha Fox. Remember Samantha Fox? No, who's that? Where was she from? A singer. S -s 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 Samantha Fox. Come on, bro. She sounds there. familiar. Yeah. She sounds familiar. I know yeah. Taylor Dane. Yeah, 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 this is the poster I had on my wall. 
He's gonna he's gonna pop it up here. <clears throat> she's not she's pretty, but I don't really recognize her. But yeah, that's so eighties, bro. Look at that eighties oh, yeah, hair. Aquanet, I love it. Taking me back. Yeah. Some bang. Yeah. yeah. So that, that I had her and I had the and then I had uh I had a Michael Jackson poster up there. Mm, and then I had a Walter <laughs> I had a Walter Payton poster. How about you? What did, what'd you have? Oh, oh that's good. That's good. <clears throat> well I used to have like I had Larry Bird sitting uh on top of a bird's nest. That was a good one. I uh, had Dr. J with a f- <laughs> fake operating table. And then I remember I, bu- I got a little old. This got into movie ones. And I guess I must have been a little older, but I had a Charlie Sheen one from uh, Platoon and also Hot Shot. I loved Charlie Sheen, man. I thought he was so cool. Wow. Yeah. So wow. that's why I'm trying to get him on the cast, bro. I'm trying to get you to have him on the cast because oh, I know well, he's on your uh, show. Oh, bro, bro, is this the one? Yeah, uh, hold on. He's going to share the screen. Leather jacket, bomber jacket. Oh, yeah, that's my Larry Bird poster. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And now show my Dr. J one where he's got an operating table. Two other ones. I had that, and I had Moses Malone, who looked like Moses, dressed like Moses. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was so cool. Yeah, these things are... They were really cool posters. I started putting them all over my wall. There's the Dr. J one. Holy shit, you got it. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, your childhood home is not uh, it's mine not anymore, in the family no. anymore, right? No, when, but when in it, like when... se- season six of the cast, I remember I went back to my house and the guy let me take a tour. I talked about it on the cast. Oh, that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. <clears throat> yeah. Um. So, yeah. So, so it was a nice, nice trip. Nice trip back home. Good to yeah. see. I mean, it, it's sad because of, we were talking at the funeral going, man, we only see the cousins when somebody dies, you know, and we, we don't get together outside of that. So it made me realize, yeah. hey, maybe we should maybe we should start doing like a reunion or I don't know, something where we get everybody together because it was, it was cool to kind of laugh and goof around with the cousins. Uh, so so that now my dad's here for a week. Nice. And he just got here on Monday. It's now Wednesday. And um, we're going to the Chicago Bears game Sunday, right? With my are they sister. playing in Chicago? No, here in LA they're playing the Chargers. LA oh, Chargers. nice, nice man! Now the last time my dad and I went to a Bears game, we sat in the end zone mm. in the middle of December, nineteen eighty one. I think Bob Avellini was the co uh, was the. I think Bob Avellini was the uh, quarterback at the time. Freezing, bro. Right. Freezing our ass off all the way in the end zone. And back then, the Chicago, uh, the Soldiers Field, I think 65% of the seats were in the end zone. So the end zone was seating was more seats than the actual length of the field. Wow. Got you? Yeah. Yeah. So it went high. And long, and uh, uh, we were freezing. I don't know. I remember the last time I went to a Bears game, so it's gonna be nice to take him to the Bears game this time around because um, we're such big, big Bears fans. And I don't even know if I could tell you this now. Can't tell you this one. This is this has to do with TV show. Man, Can't tell man. you. Sorry. Here's here. I'll leave you with this. I'll yeah. leave you with this. I'm on a flight this week from Orlando to L.A., right? Did a couple shows out in Orlando. And the woman in front of me is watching my movie about my father on the plane, right? Cool, So I'm man. looking. This is how sick I am. I'm looking through the seats because she's by the window. I'm on the aisle. And yeah. I'm looking to see if she's laughing. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So there's a part where it's funny, it's coming up, right? And nothing. I'm not getting anything from this woman. <laughs> I don't know if she's smiling. I can't tell, but there's no visual, like, you know, there's none of that. <laughs> right, right. right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I go to the bathroom. I come back, and as I come 
coming back, I tap her on the shoulder as I'm sitting down, and I go, is this movie funny? And she looks at me, and she goes, yeah, it's good. And she continues watching the movie. So I sit down. Right? <laughs> and like, Four minutes, five minutes goes by. She gets up. She turns to me. So now she's kind of leaning on her seat. And she goes, the movie is about a father and son going to <laughs> no visit. No way. Oh, my God. <laughs> going to visit his girlfriend's in-laws and they're rich and they're so, they're, they're assholes right <laughs> and i look at her i go you know i'm in the movie right and she looks at me and now she's got the thing on pause it's de niro <laughs> and i paused she and she looks she goes oh my god <laughs> 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 Twice. Twice she didn't know it was the guy she was watching on the fucking screen, right? (laughs) Right, right. Because she wouldn't believe it, man. (laughs) So she was sweet. She came back and she's like, okay, take a picture and whatnot. But I just thought that was was funny that she didn't know that. That's crazy, man. That that I was sitting behind her. That's like. Normally. Yeah. Normally I wouldn't do that. I just, I would normally play, I'll go, hey, let's have some fun with this, right? Let's have some fun. Right, 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 right. And the time I, the time I want to have fun, she, she don't even know who the hell I am. Because <laughs> she can't believe it. I'm telling you, bro, that is, God damn, that's a funny one, man. That's like a famous one where Sting the, um, the, said that he was in his office in a, in a uh, high-rise building, I think back in New York City, <clears throat> and the window washers were outside his window on the scaffold and the one guy was singing at the top of his lungs Roxanne without even knowing Sting is on the other side of the glass because it was like oh, tinted wow. yeah man so if he opened up the window and say it's a good song right <laughs> <laughs> fucking guys go yeah I love it you should get it it's off the third album <laughs> <laughs> oh bro good hanging uh, man good shit. stories good hang good hang we'll, we'll yeah, reconnect yeah. Uh, next time I want to hear this uh this is going to be fascinating. This uh, Stay well, tuned, man. guys, for yeah. next week's show because Pete's going to be describing what happened in his small town of Fredonia. Uh, for now, that's the Pete and Sebastian Show. <laughs>